some new ways of finding interest in gameplay compared to if you have just a sort of uh, a bloated thing you can just repeat what's been done in the past. So, uh, what is the single hit point model? What does it mean? Well, it normally means feeling a bit like this, but with every point in gameplay. You have one hit point. There is there's no notion of healing, there's no notion of, or very little notion of protection. You are always on the edge of death. Once anything can kill you in one, can kill you with one hit. And similarly, uh, enemies will have one hit point. You kill them in one hit. It creates this arcade style of gameplay. Uh, we're used to in old arcade games or in the likes of Pac-Man, you will be killed in one hit. Uh, I started to make a game gruesome. This one here, play Gru. And just from the premise of the game. Uh, it meant that light will kill you instantly, or will sort of stop you instantly. And therefore, light was this one-hit killer. Uh, but by the same token, adventurers in darkness, you can kill them instantly. So, thematically, with that game, it fitted in with this idea of having just single hit points. But moreover, I was a very basic programmer, so I really didn't know how to do hit points. So I thought, uh, if X in light, player dead. Easier to do than <laughs> having pluses and minuses and whatever other strain and mapping might be involved. But it did force me to really think about some interesting mechanics around this, and it resulted in a game which is very different from every other roguelike that's come before. So I kept up this thing with uh, Hobbit the Trapper, a game where you play a gnome surrounded by orcs. The orcs can kill you in one hit, you cannot attack the orcs, you can lay traps. If the orcs go on the traps, they die in one hit. Ogres. Ogres? They were ogres. Potentially, yes. Yes, they were ogres. Uh, so again, keeping up with this uh, single hit point game. And again, this was a game quite unlike any other roguelike before it. Concentration on trap lane. But also, forced me to think very carefully about some of the, the elements in it. When it came to bosses, for instance, how do I make bosses interesting when everything dies in one hit? So there's one boss, for instance, that doesn't trigger traps. You need to get something else to trigger a trap next to it and for it to be a, a wider area trap. It also made me think about what are interesting abilities to give the character this sort of inner progression system. You can give it traps with bigger radiuses, traps with certain styles, uh, sort of patterns, geometrical patterns, as well as status effects like climbing. Uh, third game, I mean, again, a single hit point game. This may look like a mess, and it is a bit of a mess. This is the only uh, turn-based bullet hell roguelike ever made. <laughs> you play, I don't even know where I am, but you play a robot with invincible armor and unstoppable bullets. The problem is, uh, when the bullets go around and hit you, then you'll end up dying. But again, all the enemies die in one hit in this. The enemies can't even hurt you, it's only your own shots that hurt you. So, there's Necessary, sort of necessary to come up with interesting content in this. The enemies can do different status effects, they, some of them run away from you, and eventually, when you find the end boss, you find he fire bullets at you as well. So there's a distinct threat in that. Now, the thing that really motivated <coughs> me was when you look at a game like this, this is Adon. This is a character with 432 out of 436 hit points. This character is not scary. Character is in the Temple of Elemental Air, facing uh, one of the big bosses in the game. And this character is not scared. They're blessed in the little and bloated. They have the audacity to be bloated <laughs> to take on these great elemental evils. The problem with a lot of roguelikes is that you get to a position where you are very strong. You build up these numbers, all these numbers associated with your character, your hit points, your uh, armor, everything else, and whatever damage you may take. In the short term, it's not likely to kill you. So what you'll do in this position, if you're a fighter, is that you'll hold down the up key until these three guys disappear. Then you'll hold down the left key until these guys disappear. Uh, what might happen is that you aren't paying attention too much. You hold down the left key too much, something else happens and you die. And you think, oh, fuck. But that is a game design flaw, as far as I'm concerned. It, it introduces lazy gameplay, and then catches you out with something threatening you. The game should be threatening at all points. It should have interesting decisions at all points. So the single hit point framework uh, supports this. This is a recent game. Now, I personally 
take full credit for inventing the single hit point model for roadmaps. Uh, I was first to do it and I made three games before anyone else decided to do it. Uh, this is one of the more recent upstarts. Uh, and this is a fantastic game. This is called Micro. Every, uh, every level takes place in just one room. All you can do is move or attack. You can move up to two squares. Uh, or you can attack the adjacent squares, only in the four directions. You do have some items, but I don't really care about those. I don't think that's particularly interesting in the scope of the game. But what is interesting is how the developer, Jason Pickering, has sat back and thought, well, how do I make this engaging with a single hit point thing? All the monsters die in one hit, the player dies in one hit. Uh, and the way he did this was the interesting movement patterns for the monsters. This is a floating eye. This floating eye will not move unless you are in a direct line with it. So if you're here or here, it will move. If you're here, anywhere along here, it will move. But it will get stuck by obstacles. Is this a really recent version? Uh, no, this is a three months old, this version. The more recent version uh, has changed a number of the dynamics around. Yeah. But no, actually, this is about two months old. Uh, it includes a food plot. The whole aim of this game is to get to the stairs. It doesn't actually matter about killing the monsters. They're obstacles in the same way as traps are. Uh, but this is an example of where, with, with the single hit point system, you cannot just have monsters that rush straight towards you. They would be very boring monsters if they did that. You cannot just be able to sit and hit the monsters and kill them all. You need to have more interesting mechanics around it, more interesting interactions. Hyper Road, another good example of this. Uh, single hit point character, single hit point enemies. This is a creeper, I think it's called in the game. And what will happen is the creeper will expand out, and only, you can only attack certain colours of it, and it can only attack you when it gets to certain colours. And one of the things actually, Hyper Road has quite a range of enemies and different interactions with the world. It only has movement on the part of the player, uh, but it has a very nice novel feature in that it has a chess restriction, a checkpoint, a checkmate restriction. You will not die. Or it will not let you make a move that will kill you. But if you say that's a threatening enemy, it won't let you move there. It will completely stop you. Uh, and so you only end the game when you put yourself into a position where you can make no move. So it's a sort of the checkmate enemy. Uh, so it's a, it's a nice way of controlling the whole keyboard fiddle that some people have problems.